mouth sounds. Malt liquor. Face tracing. Self-induced ASMR effects. Keystone ice. Twelve ounce, so I point nine. You'll shoot your eye out. I, I mm -hmm. That's the starter. And this is the finisher. Look at that ice. That bad boy's been in the freezer. Eight years. Eight years. Steel worldwide. Eight years. Steel worldwide. Drinking fine American. I mean, malt liquor. Doesn't matter. What you think? He and I don't agree on cars, that's for sure. I'm not a Chevy man anymore. But we do agree on fine bodied American made malt liquor. Malt liquor. Let's see. We're we'll shot out. Steel worldwide.
with a snoop shot out. Shout out my dear friend Amy Blue Whisper. She likes it when I make my leather jacket sounds. She likes my chew gum. So good at it. She's a good friend. I'm not friends with Steel Wolf. Why? We don't know each other. I'm a, just a guy who likes watching his videos. And then the face tracing. Self induced. ASMR effects. Was suggested by a, one of my viewers from the country of Austria. Wonderful young man, I think. simplest thing. Then you go to the ear. It's so dangerous. Then you trace out your ear. You find those sweet spots. Mm. You'll poke your eye out. It's like a palette. You wipe it clean and you start over. Mm. Mm. I know some people don't like it. Mouth 
so. Some people don't like the whispering. Some people don't like malt liquor. Drinking in videos. <coughs> Play. Oh, I did. If I poke my eye out, go poke your eye out, kid. And I poke my eye out. And I'll do it on camera if I have to. Prove my point. I watch these girls like. Oh, they're so pretty. There are there are so many pretty girls doing ASMR that are wildly successful, but there are scads. Ready? scads of female artists out there who are so pretty and they never get any views. They don't. They never get successful. They never get discovered by a large audience. And they do all the tropes. Label out, baby. They do the makeup. They do the different types of things that get girls' views. Forty-five. You gotta be in the mood. Mm. And they they put on the makeup. They stick their cleavage out there. They show their legs and their butts and all their body parts. And they never get famous. There's probably ten or twenty girls that fail. For every artist that is marginally successful. You have to have the right tools to do ASMR, girl or guy. I think the girls actually have it worse than the guys. They get They get tormented so much. They get teased and trolled. Right there on the eyebrow. They get bright. Scrupulous trolls. There's a soft spot right there. And uh, they get threatened. They get called the most horrendous names. People say stuff about me. 
and that's fine. I have a wonderful marriage. I've been married 28 years. I have raised three children, and my daughter is just a wonderful young lady. I'm raising her to be strong and determined, and she wears what she wants within reason for her age. Has to has to be limits, and uh, she does her own makeup, nails, within limits. Has to be limits, and as they get older, you loosen those limits. And I I think that there's limits for boys too, but with girls, it's something you do for safety and self-preservation more than you do for maybe the same reasons you do for boys. Boys don't get <coughs> preyed upon as much or as often as girls. Not saying boys don't, but the girls definitely have it much worse. They suffer so. Somebody made the comment about, you know, women's cleavage. It really irritates me. There's two types of, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for this. There's two types of male, male artists out there. They're the ones that admire and respect women as human beings and treat them accordingly. And then there's another group that think it's their job to tell them how to dress uh, appropriately, how to display themselves, and how to carry themselves. Um, I think I fall in that other group where I just admire women. Like, what the hell? Where? where what's? What's? What in the hell has happened to our society? Where a woman does something to accentuate her looks and her body, and men complain about it? What, what kind of world am I living in? I grew up in, you admire women. You're like, she's fine. That's a pretty woman over there. Mm, she looks really good. That is a good-looking woman. Now it's like, oh, look at her. Look at that. Oh, that's disgusting. How does she carry herself that way? Who oh, am I? Put it away, young lady. I can't. I will avert my eyes while you put on a bathrobe or a burqa. It's like the terrorists have won. I mean, I live in a post-9-11 world. The terrorists have won. When women are told to cover it up and put it away, it's like, are you on the same planet I'm on? I thought everybody went down to the beach to look at the girls and look at the beach and look at the ocean. Now I'm finding out, oh, you're a pervert. You're a weirdo. Ooh, look at you. It's like, Women are to be admired. Men, young men are to be admired by the women. It's part of the dating ritual. It's part of the, you know, growing up. I mean, I raised two sons. And you'd see girls at restaurants and school functions when my sons would walk by in their little skinny jeans and you see girls checking them out and it's like, oh, that boy, he got it. He knows what he's doing. And they do know what they're doing. They're trying to get chicks. They're trying to get dates. They're trying to get noticed. They're trying to look good, look cool, like Fonzie. Hey, hey, swagging out, you know? Swagging out for the ladies. That's for all you ladies out there that like bald, old, fat men. And I know there's
there's three or four of you out there right now just salivating. And it's okay if you're a guy salivating over all of this. I mean, what's become of our society? I thought you went to Vegas to look at girls. I thought you went and saw the Rockettes. You went there to see the Rockettes dance. You went to see them. <clears throat> if a girl doesn't want to be a Rockette, she does an audition. See? See? So, if you don't want to be a Rockette, you don't audition. If you don't want guys looking at you, you don't dress that way. You dress appropriately for the way you want a man to interpret you. Now, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for this, but, but give me some time here. You know, I'm trying my best. And guys do it accordingly, too. Guys put on the suit and the tie, straighten out their cuffs. They want to look good for the ladies. They smooth their hair back. Right? Put in that Brill Cream and that Aqua Velvet aftershave. Shave real close. Oh, it's hard to talk when you're inducing tingles. Men are like peacocks. They are, they're like peacocks. They could drive a Honda and save money, but they get the big F-150 truck. And they put in those speakers. Men are, are creatures of uh, outwardly showing their good mate. Women are about showing themselves as a good mate, you know, expressing themselves differently because men are all a bunch of idiots. They all look the same, you know. But women, they're so varied and so different. Women accentuate things about themselves that make them stand out. Beautiful, different, unique. They accentuate their hair and their eyes to stand out from the rest. Some men prefer blondes, brunettes, blue eyes, brown eyes. And when the girls start to see that, you know, men like certain looks, they like certain features, they accentuate these things to attract those men that enjoy that and like it. Now, not all men are cleavage men. Some men are butt men, or leg men, or hair men, or eyes. And they find things about women that are attractive in their own way. And then you got a, this one guy, he's really into nails. He's into women wearing long black nails. If, uh, if you're an artist and you're watching this and somebody keeps requesting long black fingernail polish, that's probably him. But what I don't understand is when women try to make themselves look beautiful, that it's any man's business. I hope you're watching long enough that I didn't say something to offend you in between. You stuck around long enough to hear what I had to say. I've been told I'm too opinionated, too political, and I'm never going to grow as a channel. But I put forward that the reason I am growing is from day one, I was opinionated, political. And I talked about social commentary. I did. My first, one of my first role plays was about an alien. First time I showed my face. And the alien was a victim of social injustice by the United States government. He was being treated like a criminal. When he was wounded, they had crashed. They were victims. They were suffering from PTSD from the crash. They were hurt. He had lost his shipmates. He was stranded and abandoned, and he was being treated as a common criminal. The first video I did on this channel 
where I showed my face was about social injustices because somebody looked different, because they were different. Because they they were unique. And and I've I've seen this path that a lot of people take. Well, if, if I had what he had, if I had what she had, well, I'd be more popular. And then I see the other paths where they say, wow, look at what she did. She's got guts. Look at what he did. He has guts. <clears throat> it's a different path. There's a path of admiration and there's a path of jealousy. When you're doing artistic ASMR videos, you need to decide which path you're going to go down. more than my fans. Fans are expected to have opinions and they're welcome to them. And artists too. They're allowed to have opinions. But think about what you're saying before you say it. We can argue that Picasso was not an artist and we can argue Picasso was. I would argue that one of Picasso's most famous paintings was the bombing of the Spanish town in the Spanish Civil War that preluded, precluded World War II. That painting was a social commentary on the destruction and death of civilian citizens in a war zone that were non-combatants. I would say that the artist transcends the art at times. The artist transcends petty political beliefs. He transcends religion. He transcends it. He welcomes all voices to his work to broaden their perspectives. I'm not reading out of a book. I'm speaking to you from my heart. We wear the mark of the beast already on our foreheads. Do you want to see it? I can show you what it looks like in the United States of America. Would you like to see it? Don't worry, I won't hurt myself. We label each other with an R or a D. or even an L and a G. still a goddamn label. You're human beings. You're more than a label. You're more than short or fat. 
or skinny or tall or dumb or smart. You're unique. And when another human being takes that pencil and he either traces it on your head or hands it to you to trace it upon your own brow, I challenge you, <clears throat> I challenge you today to remove the mark of the beast from your own brow, not from your friends, not from your family, and not on social media blabbing about your political cause. And who's right and who's wrong. No, 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 no. Remove the mark of the beast from your own life today. I challenge you. I challenge you as a God-fearing Christian, Muslim, agnostic, atheist, anarchist. Whatever you think you are, are you a label? Is that all you are? Is that what defines you, a D or an R before your name? Are you more than that? When the bombs are falling, on the civilians in Spain, Picasso painted, framed a picture of this, a snapshot of that moment. He transcended the art of cubism. He became something much bigger than a social justice warrior, a white knight, and keyboard warrior. He put it on display knowing that 50% of the people would despise him. And worse, worse yet, 50% of the people would venerate him. They would preach the gospel. But he put it out there. He made a moral decision to put his stamp on it because it was wrong. Not because he wanted these people to trumpet how right he was. Change the laws, change the government, change, change, change. <clears throat> and he didn't really give a shit what his detractors said. I got news for all of you out there. Every last one of you And I love you very much. I do. I love you. And I think you know that. I love that I have this platform to talk to you and you treat me with, you treat me very well. Much better than I thought I'd ever would receive from my peers. It's not the anti-alcohol people I worry about when I drink a malt liquor on camera. <clears throat> All right, now. 
how they're going to react. They're going to hate it. They're going to vilify it. They're going to despise it. So what's new? Being an abolitionist used to be pretty popular in this country. Of all places, the United States. Oh my God, they can make anything popular. <sighs> I worry about the people who think, oh man, he's cool. We're going to make some changes because of him. We're going to make things better because of him. Don't do that. Just be yourself. The message isn't drinking liquor. The message is be yourself. If you're straight and you like girls, you like guns, you like going to the movies, and you like watching Reno 911, good. Be yourself. Be yourself and don't worry about what other people think. Be your own self. Don't worry about what goes on outside that window. Just worry about yourself. There's times when you have to get involved. and There's times when you have to take issue with something. You'll know. You'll feel when it's the right time. Otherwise, take care of thyself. And 99% of your lifetime, not of the day, of your entire life, that will actually get you by. You want to go buy a gun? I'll go buy a gun. You want to go see a Broadway musical in New York City? Go see a Broadway musical in New York City. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody really gives a shit. When you're looking around the theater and you're saying, Oh my God, I'm wearing a Vote Trump hat. And everybody's looking at me while I'm sitting inside a theater watching a Broadway musical. You need to tell yourself one thing and one thing only. Hey, I'm being true to myself. I'm having a blast. And I can do it because I live in America. America. That's right. I think you're great. in the world like John Glenn who was a senator in my state of Ohio <clears throat> and uh, they presented him in a movie recently about the uh, Mercury rock rocket program and it was about the African American ladies who helped push that program forward they were so talented and so dedicated lovely women, beautiful women, intelligent women, and regardless of barriers and the status quo, excuse me, they soldiered on, they pushed forward to help both their country and to Establish themselves as scientists, mathematicians, engineers. They should be awarded that. But they pointed a couple tiny little things out in that movie that made me very emotional. And I would like to talk about those. One scene is they broke down on the side of the road and they got the car running and, uh, Right when that happened, the police showed up. I believe it was an Alabama policeman. And we all know the stereotypes of the Southern police. I broke down with my family in Alabama once in the early 90s. And the truck, the um, tow truck that showed up, the man who showed up, turned out to be a, a hero to us. He told us the negative of breaking down in Alabama that if we abandon our van and our 
trailer that we were pulling. We were pulling a camper trailer. That there were people who would destroy it on the side of the road. You know, they would break into it and take stuff. But he took the time to make sure we were safe and took us to a campsite t until our van was repaired. And um, he looked after my family, brought bread and milk to us after he dropped us off and, you know, released us from the tow. And I thought, this man, he knows there's elements of his state that give a negative image. But his positive witness, his positive role in our tough situation breaking down luckily my dad had insurance everything was taken care of he didn't want you to leave that state thinking negatively of him and they make a lot of movies about race and politics in the United States and they paint they get a big brush and they paint and I don't believe in races genetically we're one race and if you don't like my opinion on that go look it up there's no such thing as races of human beings there's only one human race the homo sapien and if I have um, relations with a Chinese African American Aborigine whatever we all produce offspring if I have relations with a gorilla or a dolphin it doesn't procreate because they're not human human beings only can begate human beings from other human beings and if you want to be a petty selfish person and say the Jewish race the black race the Chinese race you're being petty and you're lowering yourself you're saying that your own race is subhuman. You're saying you're subhuman. There are subhuman possibilities of your offspring. If you had an offspring with one of these subhumans, you would be less than. Your child would be less than a human being. Don't do that to yourself. And I know I'm going here, and I'm going there, and I'm all over the place, but I'm so sick and tired of everybody's bullshit. The people who made this movie about the Mercury Project took the time to portray a southern white police officer, in my eyes, correctly. He came across these three African-American ladies broke down the side of the road. They were very attractive ladies, by the way. Which I can tell you right now, the cop was out to impress, not to diss these women. <clears throat> because he was a all-American boy. And as soon as he found out they worked at the rocket program at the base. Why, he said, ladies, follow me. I will give you an escorted trip to work there's a lot of pride in the United States and the Apollo moon rocket I know this was built in Alabama mainly by the people of Alabama and they have one on display there and The people of Alabama are very proud of their role in the space program. And it took all types to make that happen. That was one scene. The other scene that they portrayed. properly in that movie was 
they portrayed my senator from Ohio, John Glenn, properly in that movie. John Glenn was a very open, accepting human being. He was a politician as well as a test pilot, and he had political ambitions. They portrayed him in that movie walking down a row of employees at the um, Science Center and shaking hands with the white um, technicians and mathematicians and then going and saying, what about these people? And he walked down to the African-American people and shook their hand. I know for a fact that he was like that. He was an inclusive, understanding, accepting human being. It is a historical record that he refused to fly the Mercury rocket that made the first orbit for the United States of America until an African-American mathematician crunched the numbers and checked that the trajectories were correct. They portrayed it in the movie as taking place in a very short amount of time for dramatic purposes for a movie. It actually took her several days in reality to crunch those numbers. But the fact remains it is a historical fact and record. John Glenn was a good man and he left a good witness to his this planet to these people, to the people of the world. If you, he died recently. He was a hero to me. And I actually know some negative things about him because I grew up in Ohio. He meant a lot to me. He uh, knew if you greet someone with a smile and a handshake, you can make a friend and not an enemy. <clears throat> I know a lot of people like this. The movie I was talking about was Hidden Figures. It came out earlier this year. I related to it very well. I liked it a lot. something about a glass bottle So nostalgic. There's something about when you take something as silly. <coughs> malt liquor or bubble gum and you place it in a receptacle a plastic bag a plastic bottle and you throw it on a shelf and you forget about those days when you were a child a young man or a young woman 
Then you went to the department store or the grocery store or the pharmacy and you put your nickel or dime in a little tiny machine and you pulled out of a gum ball and as you got older you traded in your gumballs for a six pack of uh, Mickey's malt liquors big mouths or red white and blue beer and I know there's people out there that have done that you, know, you go out and get yourself some Budweiser or some Coors You try to impress your girlfriend and you get that six pack of beer or a big old glass bottle of Colt 45 or dare I say some fruity Mad Dog 2020 and you go parking by the railroad tracks and have a few drinks and steal a kiss tender adults for five minutes. There's something beautiful about that. Even now, I remember the days when my wife and I dated. We got caught by the police. And the police could have hauled us in and The cop pulls up to the car and says, Can't park here, son. You're going to have to move along now. And I remember that event that happened 30 years ago, like it was yesterday or even last night. You can't park here, son. You're going to have to move along now. Yeah, okay, officer. Thank you, officer. Have a good night, officer. And I saw that movie, Hidden Figures, and that local small town cop realizing he had a couple of rocket scientists broke down the side of the road. He didn't look at their color their race he didn't look at their gender he saw a chance to do his civic duty well my 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 young ladies get in that car and I'll escort you to work I like that I like that I like seeing a southern boy saying, mm -mm -mm, I'm going to look fine. I'm going to give them an escort to work. Yeah. He wasn't looking at gender, color, or race. He was looking at my, my, my. I saw some fine women there. Well, what I mean is he wasn't looking down at him. And I was glad the filmmaker took the time to portray that scene properly. I was also happy that they portrayed some of the prejudice and the segregation of the day. And I had my daughter with me. And my wife and I were sitting beside African-American people who were enjoying the movie right along with us. And they were saying, that's the way it was. That's the way it was. Mm-hmm. That's the way it was. I had a real hard time watching that movie because my daughter was learning something. She was learning that is the way it was. That a woman couldn't go in the library 
because she was black. Or a woman had to sit in a certain part of the bus because she was black. They portrayed it properly. And they made people think. The one lady um, couldn't use the all-white bathroom. They portrayed that. They portrayed that properly, but they showed you've got. I mean, you could have heard. You need to see it in the theater to realize. Okay, there's there's blacks, African Americans, in the movie theater going, mm-hmm, that's the way it was. Under their breath. In 2016, 2017, you could hear the audible gasps of whites, Caucasians in the theater, especially younger ones under 40 years old, going, what? You gotta be kidding me. She couldn't use the bathroom. You could hear people talking. You could hear people realizing the stupidity in having an all-white bathroom. Do I get a white card to prove who I am? Uh, I'm actually white. My grandmother was Dutch. I really need to use the bathroom. I mean, you see the audacity and the insanity of trying to keep your job, collect a paycheck, support and feed your children, and you're not allowed to use the bathroom at work. A lot of people focus on people saying, mm-hmm, that's right, that's the way it was. But I also heard and focused on, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding. What? You've got to be kidding me. I want to leave you with that. I'm proud of people that I live around, that I work around, that I associate with. Are you? Are you proud of yourself? Are you proud of how you've stood up for your fellow man. And are you proud of how you stand up for yourself? Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. It's okay. It's okay because as long as you and I are dialoguing, there's time. If you go back to the beginning of my channel, until now, time is relevant. Not relative, relevant. There's still time for you to understand the true ramifications and the weight of history on you and the world. History and time are still relevant to your position in the universe, not relative, relevant. You can still make a difference. Hope is never gone. Hope is never gone.
you can still make a difference. You can still change your life. And you get to choose your own path. You can do it. My name is Dr. Andrew Michaels. And I'm here to help you. Until I see you again, please have a most blessed day. You know I mean that. You know I care. start a video and um, you think you're going to do one thing and you end up here. It's just the way it goes. And that's the way she goes. <laughs>